the most awesome creatures, monsters, and beasts in the Bible. In this fascinating video, we will explore the realm of the most awesome creatures, monsters, and beasts found in the Holy Scriptures. The Bible is full of mystical stories and mysterious creatures that have captured the imagination of people throughout the ages. From fiery seraphim to colossal giants, we'll delve into a world where reality intertwines with fantasy and discover how these creatures have left an indelible mark on biblical lore and the collective imagination. Let's get started. Number 10. The Demons Demons are creatures mentioned in the Bible that are considered evil spiritual beings and subservient to Satan, God's main adversary. Its existence and nature are present in various religious and cultural traditions. According to the Bible, demons are described as rebellious beings who turned away from God and chose to follow Satan. They are credited with the ability to influence humans and cause spiritual, physical, and emotional harm. They are said to possess people, cause disease, and trigger temptations. The most prominent figure associated with demons in the Bible is Satan, also known as the devil. He is described as the leader of demons and as a cunning being who seeks to lead people away from God and his ways. He is credited with titles such as, the father of lies, and, the accuser of the brothers. The Bible also mentions several encounters between Jesus and demons. Jesus presents himself as the one who has power and authority over demons, casting them out and freeing possessed people. These encounters demonstrate the spiritual conflict between good and evil. Number 9. The Nephilim. The Nephilim are mysterious beings mentioned in the Bible, specifically in the book of Genesis. According to the biblical narrative, the Nephilim were a race of giants who inhabited the earth before the flood. The story affirms that these beings were the result of the union between the sons of God and the daughters of men. The interpretation of who exactly the sons of God were has generated debate among scholars and theologians throughout the centuries. The Nephilim are described as beings of great stature and strength, and their presence on earth was seen as a contributing factor to humanity's moral and spiritual decline at the time. Their existence was one of the reasons why God decided to send the flood to purify the earth. The history of the Nephilim in the Bible is brief and does not offer much detail about their origin, nature, or specific actions. Its mention is limited to a few verses in Genesis, which has led to speculation and various interpretations in different religious traditions and mythologies. Number 8. The Cherubs Cherubs are mythical creatures mentioned in the Bible and are considered one of the highest classes of angels. Its name derives from the Hebrew word, kerub, which means, blessing, or, protection. They appear in several biblical books, such as Genesis and Ezekiel, and are described as beings with distinctive attributes and characteristics. According to the biblical description, the cherubim are angelic beings who guard and protect the Garden of Eden after Adam and Eve were expelled. They are depicted as human-shaped beings, but with wings on their backs, and are often depicted as having four faces, including those of a human, a lion, an ox, and an eagle. These creatures are symbols of the Divine Presence and are considered heavenly guardians. His image is depicted on the Ark of the Covenant, which was a sacred box mentioned in the Old Testament. It is also mentioned that the cherubim cover the throne of God and are bearers of his glory. Although the exact description of the cherubim is limited in the Bible, their main role seems to be that of guarding and protecting sacred places and divine objects. In addition, his image has been used in religious iconography throughout history as a symbol of worship and veneration of God. Number 7. The Unicorns. 
Unicorns are creatures mentioned in the Bible, but their appearance is quite limited. The term, unicorn, is used in some Bible translations to describe a mysterious and powerful animal. In the Old Testament, unicorns are mainly mentioned in the Book of Numbers and in the Book of Psalms. In these passages, they are described as strong and wild creatures, endowed with a horn or horns. However, the exact description of unicorns varies depending on translations and interpretations. Although unicorns are commonly associated with mythology and fantasy, their appearance in the Bible has spawned different theories. Some suggest that the Hebrew terms originally used could have been misinterpreted or incorrectly translated, and actually referred to animals known at the time, such as the buffalo or rhinoceros. Number 6. The First Beast. The first beast is a monster mentioned in the book of Revelation of the Bible. It is also known as the beast from the sea. According to the story, this beast emerges from the sea and is described as a ferocious creature with ten horns and seven heads, each with a crown. The beast from the sea represents the power and authority of the empires and corrupt rulers in the world. It is said that he receives his power from a dragon, which symbolizes Satan. Many interpret the first beast as a representation of the Antichrist, an evil figure who rises in the end times to deceive humanity and carry out acts of evil. The biblical text also mentions that the first beast is worshipped and revered by many people on earth, as it performs deceptive signs and wonders. Those who do not worship the beast or bear its mark on their forehead or right hand will be persecuted and face dire consequences. However, the account also tells of a second beast, known as the beast from the earth or the false prophet, who works closely with the first beast. Together, they deceive the people and establish a global government system that seeks to control and subjugate humanity. Number 5. The Second Beast. The Second Beast is a monster mentioned in the Biblical Book of Revelation, specifically in Chapter 13. This beast is described as coming from the earth and has two horns similar to those of a lamb, but it speaks like a dragon. According to the Biblical text, the Second Beast works in conjunction with the First Beast, which is described as a beast that rises from the sea and has ten horns and seven heads. The second beast has the ability to perform great signs and wonders, and it deceives the people of the earth with its miracles. He is also credited with the power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that it can speak and cause all who do not worship the beast to be persecuted. The second beast also imposes a mark on the right hand or on the forehead of people, without which they are not allowed to buy or sell. This mark is known as the number of the beast and is identified with the number 666. Those who refuse to receive this mark face persecution and exclusion from society. The description of the second beast in the apocalypse has generated various interpretations throughout history. Some see it as a symbolic representation of political or religious powers that deceive and control people. Others interpret her as a specific figure or an evil world leader that will emerge in the end times. Number 4. The Leviathan. Leviathan is a legendary monster that is mentioned in the Bible, specifically in the Book of Job, the Psalms, and the Book of Isaiah. He appears as a gigantic and powerful creature, described as either a sea monster or a sea dragon. The Leviathan symbolizes chaos and destructive power in biblical mythology. In biblical texts, Leviathan is presented as an invincible and terrifying being that lives in the depths of the sea. He is described as having tough, tough scales, a mouth full of sharp teeth, and immense strength. It is said that he can breathe fire and smoke smoke, and that his gaze is capable of paralyzing those who face it. 
Leviathan is mentioned in the context of creation and God's power over nature. He is described as an uncontrollable creature, but one who is subject to divine power. In some passages, it is mentioned that God has the power to tame Leviathan and use it as a symbol of his supremacy over all things. Throughout history, Leviathan has been interpreted in various ways. Some see him as a literal monster, while others see him as representing cosmic forces and powers. In the Jewish tradition, Leviathan is associated with the end of time and final destruction, while in the Christian tradition it is interpreted as a symbol of Satan and evil forces. Number 3. The Behemoth. The Behemoth is a monster mentioned in the Bible in the Book of Job, specifically in Chapter 40. Although its description is quite enigmatic, it is presented as a creature of great size and strength, considered one of God's most impressive creations. The behemoth is mentioned in the context of a series of rhetorical questions that God asks Job to show his power and wisdom. God asks Job if he can tame the behemoth and describes some of its notable features. The biblical text describes it as a herbivorous animal that feeds on grass like an ox. Its bones are said to be like tubes of bronze, and its limbs are powerful and strong like bars of iron. In addition, it has a robust tail and moves with surprising agility. Some scholars have interpreted the behemoth as either a hippopotamus or an elephant, as they share certain characteristics with the biblical description. However, the exact nature of the behemoth remains the subject of debate and speculation. Number 2. The Ophanum. The Ophanum is a type of creature described in the Bible and in Jewish tradition as a class of seraphim. These celestial creatures are mentioned in the book of the prophet Ezekiel, where they are described as flaming wheels with multiple wings. The term, Ophanum, is derived from the Hebrew word, Ophan, which means, wheel. According to the biblical description, the Ophanim are powerful and majestic beings that are close to the throne of God. They are special seraphim with the ability to move with great speed and agility, and are depicted as constantly spinning wheels. These wheels are covered in eyes, symbolizing their supernatural perception and knowledge. In addition to their visual appearance, the Ophanim are said to possess great intelligence and wisdom. Its main function is to carry the throne of God and assist in the worship and praise of Him. They are also believed to be bearers of divine will and involved in the administration of divine justice. While the description of Ophanim is quite limited in the Bible, there have been various interpretations and artistic representations throughout history. These depictions often attempt to capture the majesty and mysterious nature of these celestial creatures. Number 1. Satan. Satan is a central character in the Judeo-Christian tradition and is depicted as a powerful, fallen, and evil spiritual being. According to the Bible, Satan was originally an angel created by God, known as Lucifer, who rebelled against his creator due to his pride and desire to be equal to God. As a result of his rebellion, he was expelled from heaven and became Satan the adversary of God and mankind. Satan is described as the leader of the fallen angels or demons, and his main goal is to lead people away from God and tempt them to sin. He is credited with the ability to deceive and seduce humanity, taking advantage of his weaknesses and desires. He is called the father of lies and is considered the enemy of good and justice. In the Bible, Satan appears in several stories, such as the story of the temptation of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and the story of the temptation of Jesus in the desert. He is described as a cunning and powerful being, capable of performing false miracles and exerting influence in the world. Throughout history, Satan has been portrayed in various ways in art and literature, 
often as a terrifying figure with horns, a tail, and a trident. He has also been associated with hell, a place of eternal punishment for those who turn away from God.